So listen, if there was one thing I could go back in time and do sooner in my career as a gardener, it would be saving seeds. I wish I had started saving seeds sooner. For some reason, I was really intimidated by the process. I thought it was going to be much harder than it really is. And I didn't do it for many years in gardening. And that was a huge mistake. As a gardener, saving seeds is such an important thing. And we're going to talk about why. All right, let's dive in. Let's talk really quick about why do we want to be saving seeds? As gardeners, why does this even matter? There are so many reasons. And again, like I said, this is absolutely one of those things. I'm like, why didn't I do this sooner? It's surprisingly easy and there's just so many benefits. The most obvious one is resiliency. If you're able to go from seed to crop to food to seed again, all on your own, that's huge. If there's ever a shortage or things like that, it's huge to know how to save your own seeds and to have your own supply of seeds on hand. And while many of us think that that might not happen in our lifetime, it, it really can and it has in fact. In 2020, during the pandemic and the gardening boom, so many seed companies sold out seeds and people weren't able to source seeds like they normally would. I actually didn't buy any seeds that year because I had such a huge supply of seeds that I had been saving over the years. And do you know how good it felt to not have to be scrambling for seeds? I had a full, huge garden that year without any stress of having to look for seeds. I just used all the ones I had, which was great because frankly, I needed to use them up anyways. So resiliency, definitely one of the top reasons to save your own seeds. But if you're not worried about that, there's a lot of other reasons. So when your plant is going to seed, it's gonna have to go through a flowering stage first. Now with fruiting plants, we obviously go one stage further and it produces the fruit, you know, like a tomato or a cucumber or a melon where the seeds are inside. But with a lot of them, it simply goes to the flowering stage and then then those flowering heads are what produces the seeds. So like these onion plants here, you get these beautiful blossoms in your garden. And I don't know why you wouldn't want more flowers in your garden. I mean, it's a win-win for me. I get a beautiful garden with all of these amazing flowers to look at, and they're going to attract a lot of pollinators and a lot of different types of insects that are really beneficial to the garden, whether it's lacewing, um, hoverflies, things like that, all love blossoms, especially if you're growing your carrots or things like that, parsley, letting that go to seed. I've got some parsley right back there going to seed. And the hoverflies and the green lacewing, they all love those type of flower heads. So having an abundance of flowers in your garden is going to benefit your garden as a whole and just make it more beautiful. The other obvious benefit is saving money. You know, not only are we not having to scramble for seeds, but we're also going to be saving a lot of money when we're saving our own seeds. It's crazy how expensive seed packets have gotten in the last few years. Um, so now when you're paying $4 per seed packet, you know, and you're getting maybe 20, 30 seeds, depending on the variety, that's great. And that can go a long ways, but it can go even further when you can get at least that much, if not more, from one of these flowering heads. So the amount of seeds that you get when you're saving your own is exponentially larger than what you're getting from a seed packet. And what that means is that you have enough to share. Seed swaps have become one of my favorite things because you're able to get all of these really lovingly grown and cared for seeds. And a lot of times they're varieties that you wouldn't see otherwise. Which brings me to my next point, which is having a legacy. I know so many people who have seeds are passed down from their grandparents and they're still growing those varieties. That's huge to leave a legacy in a special type of seed or a special plant that you cultivated that you're able to share with your friends and family. Like, that's a great legacy to leave behind and something that's so special. So I always want to have an abundance of seeds that I can share with everyone. And seed saving is a way to do that. And then probably one of the coolest reasons to grow seeds is that if you're saving seeds year after year, like we were just talking about, you know, if you're replanting a crop year after year, what you're actually doing is that you're generationally adapting that crop to your specific garden, your environment, your microclimates, your dry seasons, your wet seasons. And by selecting the best one each year that handled those conditions the best, whatever the insects are, and you know, the common fungal issues that you have in your area, if you can select from those seeds that performed really well in all of those conditions, 
each year and save that, it's only getting stronger and stronger. That is actually going into that seed's genetic makeup. So it's going to be able to fend those things off better or handle those dry seasons better than other seeds if you were purchasing them from an area that's, you know, across the country. That seed's not going to be adapted to your specific climate like a seed that you have grown will be. So that's by far the coolest reason I think to grow seeds. But honestly, it's really easy to do. So what I would encourage you to do if you're new to seed saving is to start with one to two plants and start by saving those seeds. You know, if you can save out a few plants each year to save seeds from, that's a great way to start. Just start with a few, it doesn't have to be a lot. I, at this point, dedicate probably about a fourth to a third of my garden to seed saving because for me, seed production is just as important as producing the actual food that we're eating because if we're not saving seeds, you know, we're not going to have more food production in the long run. So that's why you'll see in my garden, there's always things blossoming, there's always things going to bloom. And a garden where you're growing both food and seeds really is a possibility. And it's gonna look up a little bit different from your traditional garden. Things might get a little bit more wild, but honestly, I really prefer the beauty of having that mix of all these gorgeous, huge flowering plants and also these plants that are in basic production for you know our tomatoes and all of our staple crops like that. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and give it a thumbs up or share it with a friend so we can all be saving seeds together.